Good evening. It's currently 9 p.m. and you're listening to the 9 O'Clock Meltdown, showcasing favorite and up-and-coming local artists with the relaxed coffeehouse vibe, plus interviews, live studio performances, and more. It's all here on 91.3 KUWS Superior. Now, here's your host for the evening, Simply C. Thanks, Forrest, and I am sitting here with Brianne Marie in the studio today. Thank you so much for coming in. And we're going to start off with her, uh, not title track, but her first track, Have Your Heart, off of her new album, Six Strings of Peace. All right, here we go. And that was Brianne Marie with her song, I Have Your Heart. And thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. Thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Uh, do you want to explain a little bit about that song? The title is kind of interesting. I Have Your Heart. Or Have have Your Heart. It I is. I have. Yep. Yeah. Have Your Heart. Yes. Yep. And Have Your Heart, it was actually a song I wrote for Evan, my fiance, who's the lead guitar player on the album. Um, you know, when we first started dating he was talking about past relationships and I thought, all right, I'm going to have to convince this guy that it's okay to trust me. So that's what the song is about. Let me have your heart. All right. Well, it sounds very interesting and no better way to put that. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> no, uh, this is your first album here and I actually pronounced it. I didn't pronounce it wrong, but I, I left out uh, a bit of it. It's six strings of peace and sanity. Yes. So 
an interesting uh, title. <laughs> yeah, the the whole album actually, with the exception of that first song, has been a culmination of songs about um, healing through the losses that I've had. So this this whole project came about um, when I started writing my own original music. So in 2006, my father passed away um, une- unexpectedly and very hard on the entire family, very tragic. And then in 2009, uh, my brother passed away. So having two people in our family close to us um, just kind of shook the ground from underneath us and we were all trying to figure out how to get through and I started playing guitar in 2007 as a way to to cope and Mm -hmm. um, music came after that as far as writing my own music writing about what was happening with with my father and my brother and and just loss in general and so six strings of peace and sanity is what happens it's when I play I have peace and I have sanity so Mm -hmm. that's what it is all right well very uh drawn from real life and your own experiences and I'm very sorry to hear about those tragedies thank you yeah (laughs) but uh looks like something kind of good came out of them in a way yeah you know it really it it has helped me a ton it's helped my family and then we go to shows we play some of these songs and people will come up and tell us their own stories of loss and Mm -hmm. so I hope that the music gets out there and helps you know somebody else and even not just the you know hearing a song and I felt better but wow, she took these situations, could have went a different direction, but poured herself into something positive. Maybe I can do that too. Mm -hmm. So if it can be inspiring, that's what we're hoping will Mm -hmm. happen. So you are actually trying to inspire people through the music or reach people. Right, exactly. I want people to, and not just the, the exact songs and the words that are in the songs, but the act of creating a CD out of what happened. You know, some people would turn to substance abuse, Uh, depression um, and and other unhealthy ways of coping and I decided to put all my energy and anger and happiness and sadness and everything that was going on into something that would have been positive so I was taking a picture (laughs) (laughs) that's okay (laughs) there was a moment of silence oh no moment of silence on the radio is never a good thing especially if it lasts longer than 12 minutes Right, because <laughs> there's a lot of ads that could fill up 12 minutes, I'd imagine. <laughs> and music, of course. Exactly. Music music is the number one thing around here. Um, now, just kind of looking at your album artwork here, it's... Um, don't know if I want to label it as country. There's a kind of sketch of you on the front, just to explain, uh, with a cowgirl hat on and an acoustic guitar, and then on the back there's a little butterfly. Mm-hmm. Very cute. Um, was that kind of the angle that you were going through? was kind of a more country feel? Yeah, I'm a country music artist, okay. for sure. I'm mm-hmm. very inspired by the classics, and when I say that, I mean Dolly Parton, Kenny Rogers, Johnny Cash, June Carter, the the classic Grand Ole Opry-style country music. My dad used to love that genre. I grew up listening to it on vinyl, and when I started playing music, again, I just started playing at home on my own to cope But I started thinking, you know, I want to take this out and actually play some shows around town. So um, I thought, what what are we missing in the Twin Ports? Because I love pop and hip hop and rock and all sorts of genres and and country, of course. But I noticed we had a lot of female vocalists that were either folk or alt rock and some of those genres. I didn't see anybody playing country music. I mean, Mm -hmm. I knew Old Knifey had some country going on, but (laughs) um, really there wasn't a female lead vocal artist that was doing country in the Twin Ports so I decided Mm -hmm. to really cling to that I've also that's that was my karaoke stuff you know when I first started singing as a little kid I would do karaoke and it was always country music that I was singing it's easy to sing it's fun to sing and then for guitar it lends itself well to somebody who doesn't know how to play the crazy complicated (laughs) bar chords you know it's a simple Mm -hmm. three four chords and I can handle it so Mm -hmm. all right sounds good and you know when I think of country I think of kind of uh what's been actually labeled as outlaw country so more kind of the Johnny Cash the really Mm -hmm. really early Elvis before he got into his little uh rock and roll I guess you could say uh way back when um now what what would you label yourself would you label yourself kind of pop country is what 
kids these days are hearing on the radio would you label yourself you know more dolly parton kind of that blues country? yeah you know it's it's a little different you know the the second track on the album good bad man we decided to go with more of a southern drawl more that classic style but then as you get deeper into the album you know track seven is more pop rock style so they really they do go back and forth i enjoy you know everything within the range mm-hmm. of country but um yeah, I mean, we good bad man is is about as grand old Opry I think as you can <laughs> get on the <laughs> album. All right, so. sounds good. Uh, why don't we take a little sampling of uh, good bad man? Sure. And then we'll be right back. You're listening to the nine o'clock meltdown here on ninety one point three KUWS. I'm your host Simply C, and I'm sitting in the studio with uh, Brianne Marie and her brand new album. All right, let's take a listen. So many tears You can try But you never understand Yeah The heart and soul Of a good bad That was Good Bad Man off of Brianne's newest album, or first album, first rather, first mm-hmm. album, Six Strings of Peace and Sanity. I almost uh, mixed those two up and said Six Strings of Sanity and Peace. 
Oh, well, it's another way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that was Good Bad Man. And that song was written about my dad. You know, the lyrics, my dad, he was a good bad man. Mm-hmm. He really was. He was, you know, good bad man is somebody who, uh, you know, makes some bad choices in life, doesn't always follow the straight and narrow, but um, at heart they're a good person. And that's who he was. I wanted to write a song that would introduce people to who he was because he died too young he was only 46 years old when he took his own life Mm -hmm. and um yeah I really I struggled with people not getting to know who he was so that's what the song is all about Mm -hmm. all right well uh, it sounds like a good release and a positive way of kind of yeah releasing that and kind of shedding some light on maybe some dark places yeah, and people relate to it. When we've played this out live at shows, um, I even had, a, you know, we, we brought someone in to um, work with us on the album with some violin, which we never ended up using, but she's like, you know, my dad's CB name was Pack Rat too. <laughs> I thought, oh, that's awesome. You know, people relate mm-hmm. to um, the lyrics, and that's really cool when that oh, happens. Mm-hmm. Very awesome. Very awesome. Um, now, this is your very first album that mm-hmm. you've ever put out. Um, well, not ever, but you know <laughs> that you've put out so far uh, professionally. Um, I was just kind of flipping through the um, booklet that you have in there, and it looks like you went to Sacred Heart Studios. Um, do you want to tell me a little bit about that experience? Yeah, uh, we selected Sacred Heart as a place to record before we launched the the campaign. This whole project came about. Uh, it, it was made possible through kickstarter.com. We mm-hmm. launched a campaign, raised money, and, and we even told our, our fans and friends before we started, we're going to be recording at Sacred Heart. And um, we wanted that sound. We wanted Eric uh, Swanson's experience that he has working with people. I'm a newbie. I've never done this, I've never been in the studio. Um, so I really wanted the help uh, of experts and a great space. Mm-hmm. And it was a dream come true. I've played a couple times at Sacred Heart for different shows. And when you are in the sanctuary space, your sound oozes around you. It's like no other venue in town. And so um, it was really cool to record there. Mm-hmm. They don't build them like they used to, especially no. churches. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, indeed. There you go. Um, so for the whole Kickstarter and things like that, kind of what led up to wa- even wanting to do a Kickstarter? Was it just kind of, hey, I want to put my music down, you know, to a CD, I want to sell a CD? Or was it just a matter of everybody else is doing it, so why can't I? Uh, <laughs> well, we I, I had all, had the New Year's resolution at the end of 2000, and it would be 10 or 11, 11, to make an album Mm -hmm. in the following year. So I was going to do it no matter what. I made the New Year's resolution on January 1st. It took me until April to really gather my thoughts and ideas of how would I make this possible? How much would it cost? I was asking friends that were musicians, where's the best place for this, that, or the other thing? And uh, Cars and Trucks did a Kickstarter project to fund their latest album, which is just being released this month, I think, or it's, they've already um, released one of their songs. And I was inspired by how all their friends and fans were making comments and throwing money at this campaign. I thought, you know, I wonder if my friends and family would do the same thing if they'd all pitch in knowing that they'd get a CD and a T-shirt. And then I started, you know, my, I have a marketing degree from UMD and I just I'm like, oh, I'm going to use my marketing brain on this one. And <laughs> what do people want for prizes? And oh, it'll be so fun to put this together. And Mm-hmm. Really jumped into it, launched the campaign on my birthday, April 10th. Actually, it had to go the next day because I had to wait for Kickstarter to approve it. Mm-hmm. But April 11th, and I had 30 days to raise the money. And having met the goal was just what I needed to validate what I was mm-hmm. doing. People want this music. They want me to finish this project. For me, for them, whatever it was, people were willing to pay money for it. Um, and, and I had all the funding I needed to get started. So it was way cool. All right. Very cool. Um, so kickstart no kickstarter.com, mm-hmm. I believe it is. All right. So for the younger musicians out there and, you know, people that want to do this, how do you go about setting, setting a goal and, you know, going through all the steps? Well, what I would, what I did and what I'd recommend others do is a quick Google search on the best Kickstarter campaigns or crowdsource mm-hmm. funding, what to do, what not to do, because I definitely took those tips and tricks out there and, and did everything they were telling me to do. And even after I launched it, I had friends that were emailing me, Hey, change this, do this real quick and make mm-hmm. sure you do this. So, um, 
I, I say do it. I mean, there's no reason not to do it. If you've got a project that you know is ready to go, you just need the funding. Um, but make sure you see what works, what doesn't work. Um, one of the things is a, a good video, a compelling video message that's mm -hmm. very short that will explain your story. And then fun prizes. You know, it, it's it's not a donation. It's actually um, an investment. You're investing in a project. So what would mm -hmm. people want out of their money that you're putting in? Mm -hmm. And I did ask quite a few people. We, we ran the project. Um, Evan and I ran the project by a few of our friends and said, would you want this? Would you? How much would you pay for this opportunity? And one of the prizes was a YouTube cover song dedication. Oh, very cool. So on my YouTube channel, you can see a couple of them. Some I've taken down because they were just goofy. But um, mm -hmm. I, for $30, if you put that in, you could get the CD, a T-shirt, and I would cover any song no exceptions on my YouTube channel. <laughs> so I've covered everything from Dreamweaver to Happy Happy Joy Joy the Punk version to <laughs> Eminem's Stan and uh, and some other songs that are more my style, like a Dolly Parton cover and mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah, well, it's been fun. Very interesting. Do you still have uh, your Eminem cover up? That is. That is up. It is listed <laughs> as explicit. Eminem has a, a, a bad potty mouth, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I even texted it to my 14-year-old my, uh, daughter after I finished it. She was at her dad's, and I texted it to her. I said, hey, what do you think? Eminem's her favorite artist. She texted back, Mom, don't. Just don't. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so it's goofy, you mm -hmm. know, and I, I did all those videos with, the I wanted to give people what they spent their money on you know what mm -hmm. I mean I wanted to give them what it's worth so when we go and do a show and somebody requests a song and they put a dollar in the tip jar mm -hmm. it's the same thing you want to give them what they're asking for because they're supporting you back mm -hmm. so I put I put everything into those videos we spent a lot of time on them <laughs> all right sounds good um now to get a hold of your YouTube video or you know you're up on Facebook and things like that how what is the best way to get hold of you you could, if people are interested yeah. in um, booking you or just leaving you a comment yeah you can follow me on Twitter my Twitter ID is Brianne Marie MN you can friend me on Facebook and that's Brianne Marie and you can find my YouTube channel just go to YouTube and type Brianne Marie Duluth and you'll mm -hmm. find me uh, my channel on there and what else am I on I'm on LinkedIn <laughs> <laughs> and email. My email is Brianne Marie Music MN at gmail dot com. Mm -hmm. All right, sounds good. Um, now, what what have you been doing? Uh, you kind of mentioned earlier before you started the Kickstarter, you were playing around town. Was that kind of open mics or was it actual venues? You know, what what was that like? <laughs> well, the year before, I had another New Year's resolution to play at least one gig or show a week. Mm -hmm. in the upcoming year and okay. I ended up at, at the point of launching the project the Kickstarter project I was doing one to three gigs a week and this is anything mm -hmm. from an open mic to a three-hour bar gig on the outskirts of town to um, a funeral memorial service a uh, assisted living facility a donation for a nonprofit organization I like to donate about once a month to a local nonprofit if they need live music for their event mm -hmm. so I've done quite mm -hmm. a few of those that's been fun and um, I've, I haven't been playing in bands. For this project, we did put a band together. But for the most part, it's been me solo or Evan and I playing together. And we complement each other really well. I do the basic chords and he does the fancy footwork. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds good. No wonder you two are engaged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, now, you said that you put uh, together a a band for um this album how how was that did you have to actively go out and find people and be like hey i'm doing this kickstarter be on my cd or was it just kind of like networking and you know eric swanson's like oh you should get this guy we we asked anybody and everybody when we were looking for certain instruments um we started with friends mm -hmm. there there was uh you know one person had uh, messaged us and said hey I heard you're doing an album if you need this instrument let me know and so it, it was a lot of networking back and forth uh, some of it was just logistics w you know finding somebody that was available certain times a lot of the musicians in town are really busy and they're working on other projects as well so finding availability was was tough and then we brought our mandolin player and he also did a, a guitar solo on grandpa um, he 
you drove up from the cities, had a very small window of time before he had to leave town, and we were able to get studio time right when he was there. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, but we just have a really great group of musicians. Our drummer, Amy Ugstead, was in uh, the band Eriark, and she's in two other bands in town, and it's all metal rock. <laughs> so I said, Amy, how do you feel about uh, doing some oompas on a country <laughs> album? Mm-hmm. And she did fanta- a fantastic job. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And so uh, anybody who's worked on the project or plays future shows with us, we call them the Front Porch Sinners. So Brian Marie and the Front Porch Sinners. All right. Uh, how did the uh, Front Porch Sinners come about? Well, that idea was just something that I thought of as a band name. We thought if we had a group of people that were backing us on stage, what would we call them? And I don't even know how many other names we came up with, but that was definitely a winner. We liked the thought of this idea of sitting out on a front porch in the summer down south somewhere doing some sinning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Um, why don't we take a listen to here? Grandpa is more than meets the eye. And then uh, is there another track where the front porch sinners really kind of come through or are they just kind of all underlaying in all the songs? You know, I think they're they're all throughout the song. But um, after this one, we may need to listen to What Does It Take? Because I think that one really highlights our sinners. Right. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Sounds good. I'm sitting in the studio here with Brianne Marie. Uh, We're talking about her new album, Six Strings of Peace and Sanity. I almost did it again. Yeah. said sanity and peace. <laughs> but, uh, you know, either way it works. <laughs> either way it works. You're listening to 9 O'Clock Meltdown here on 91.3 KUWS in Superior. He has the eyes of a child. Would you 
and that was Brianne Marie off of her new album, uh, Kickstarter album rather, and she's actually sitting in the studio with me today. Thank you so much for stopping by and thank you braving the cold weather. Mm-hmm. It's it's actually rather warm in our studios. I'm not sweating completely, but I'm on borderline, <laughs> and I'm just like, ah, there are musicians in here, and I'm sweating. This isn't okay, but it's all right. <laughs> We'll get through it. <laughs> we will. We'll get through it together. <laughs> so, um, now we were talking earlier, and you're a little bit country, a little bit folk, um, kind of more country than folk. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> more country than folk, and then a little bit pop. And some of the songs on the album turned out a little more rock or bluesy. So one of the songs, uh, What Does It Take? I wrote the lyrics to it. Mm-hmm. And this this song is about um, my older brother who suffers from substance abuse and, you know, just frustrated with what was going on or what is going on in his life right now. So I wrote the lyrics, but I wasn't really coming up with any of the music to it. So Evan wrote the music, and that's why it comes through as more rock, because I'm a little bit country. He's yeah. a little bit rock and roll. Oh, well, there you go. So, um, and then when we went into the studio and we were recording this, our bass player, Mark Glenn, who plays in a few bands around town, like mm-hmm. uh, Don't Sweat September and um, Three Song Sunday and Good Intentions. Good Intentions and some other bands, he, he said, you know, I think I've got a piano line for this. Do you mind if I lay down a track? Mm-hmm. Yes, you are allowed to do anything you want to do <laughs> with the music. So Evan wrote the music to it. Mark put some piano to it, and it came out a little more rock. And um, it's just a beautiful song, mm-hmm. so it turned out great. All right, sounds good. And, you know, Mark Glenn is just everywhere all at once. Mm-hmm. Can't put a cap on that, man. Glad he's around. Yeah. Uh, he and... Um, Oh man, I'm I'm drawing a blank. I shouldn't be doing this. Why am I drawing a blank on his name? Oh my gosh, uh, Lionel Gazelle's bass player. <laughs> oh no, it'll it'll come to me. Are you thinking Ethan Thompson? Nope. No. Nope. No. Nope. He's nope. everywhere too. He's everywhere too, though. He is. <coughs> yeah. If he you is. can play bass in this town, mm-hmm. you've got you've got other bands <laughs> that want you to play for you. So <laughs> there you go. Mark Gartman's everywhere too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My goodness. Um, they're just everywhere. Um, all right, so I'm I'm terribly sorry I drew a blank, but uh, let, let uh, it's too warm in the studio. I'm getting fatigued. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's listen to what does it take off of your new album, Six Strings of Peace and Sanity, by Brianne Marie.
and that was what does it take off of Brianne Marie's brand new album Six Strings of Peace and Sanity and uh, with us is actually her fiance and lead guitarist <laughs> <laughs> um, Evan now uh, Brianne was saying a little bit earlier um, we just listened to song number three which is what does it take and you actually came up with the music for that one do you yeah. want to kind of tell me about uh, how you do what you do <laughs> <laughs> well um like Brian said before, she's got more of a, like a, a, you know, a country music background, um, and I, I, my background is more of, you know, rock, hard rock, metal. I've been in several different types of bands and a bunch of different influences. But basically, this the way the song came together was just I don't know. Um, she was she had words. She kind of sang a little bit of a melody for me and um, was kind of. St- didn't really know where she wanted to take it and um i just had her start just keeps humming and singing what she had what she had and what she thought she wanted to do and i mm-hmm. uh, just kind of built a basic song the basic basic chord structure around that and then just kind of play with it a little bit and see what i could kind of see where i could take it and it just kind of mm-hmm. developed into what it is on the record all right sounds good and we were kind of talking a little bit and you said the chord structure kind of uh changes up a little bit you were comparing it to playing darts yeah <laughs> um i kind of wanted to see how many how many chords i could f- kind of fit into one song um most of the you know most you know classic country is two three sometimes four chords mm-hmm. um there's maybe six or seven in this one <laughs> All um right. so it actually kind of does change key um so kind of wanted to, I don't know, change it up a little bit. So, <laughs> yeah, and it worked out really well. So. Mm-hmm. All right, and sounds good. Yeah. So I, I'm going to ask, since you guys are going to get married at some point in time, yeah. uh, did you guys meet through the venue of music, or did you meet completely opposite? I would say that the music is what kept us in communication because uh, Evan and I first met when he moved to Duluth he's from Minneapolis St. Paul area moved to Duluth back in 2005 when I was working at the mall and he had just been recruited to work at a store in the mall so I was the first person that he met when he moved to Duluth mm-hmm. <laughs> he was in town and we just stayed in touch throughout the years um, with music I bought a when I bought my guitar I sent him a message because I knew he had played and I mm-hmm. said hey I got this guitar and I'm gonna take lessons and he just kept encouraging me and kept up on things I was doing as I started doing shows you know my first big show at Sacred Heart was with uh, Duluth does Grand Ole Opry or Duluth does Opry mm-hmm. and I, I did a Dolly Parton song and I remember how exciting it was and you know sending him a message and um he was just always very encouraging so all right sounds good well the best of luck to the both of you musically and in the future um now what do you guys kind of have on your plate now touring or kind of taking a little break from the hill of the kickstarter (laughs) right now we are working on a few more commitments left through kickstarter we've got a few more things to mail out send out to the backers we are hoping we're going to be on the list for homegrown music festival coming up in the twin ports this spring we (laughs) just did the winter fiasco on friday oh yeah we were at tycoons for that so um we're, we're trying to scale back the shows to instead of one a week maybe one a month Mm-hmm. And uh, the wedding is in September, so we've got a lot to plan. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, we both work full-time jobs in Duluth. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have two kids and just bought a house, and I started grad school. So, But we can handle all of this. All this right. is no big deal, right? Well, uh, well the best <laughs> of luck to the both of you in, Thank you in that. Wow, and I thought I had a lot on my plate. There, There is no <laughs> comparison there. Oh, we did, we did mention that we wanted to work on my project next, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. we got to get some songs going on. So we'll both be writing. Mm-hmm. For sure. All right. We're and always writing. And what is your project, sir? I, you know, I've been, re- like, I, I've been in and out of bands and writing for many, many years. And um, I just want to kind of put something else with my, just my voice on it. So mm-hmm. um, I kind of need to write a few more songs and kind of, you know, trickle it down to a, maybe a handful and just release a small EP of some sort. So mm-hmm. I have about... I don't know, over 100 songs to go through, so. All right, sounds good. Now, um, you said kind of for your project, you've got CDs and T-shirts. Do you have anything else, like stickers or? No, we've got the T-shirts and the CDs. Mm-hmm. I 
have less than 10 CDs on my Bandcamp website. You can order T-shirts and physical CDs, or up to 10 of them. Um, or you could, all, you could get the digital copy off of Bandcamp or okay. CD Baby, iTunes. Mm-hmm. It's on all the major websites, so you can get the album out there. I don't know I'll do any other merchandise beyond the T-shirts and CDs for now, maybe down the road. But um, right now, I'm just so happy with how fast the CDs have been selling already. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Well, the best of luck to you guys in uh, the future, future CDs and things like that, uh, future um, performances. Thank and you. Like that. Um, I can't wait to hear you guys out at Homegrown. So. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Sounds Thank good. Thank you. Now we've got a couple more songs to listen to. Um, I'm going to play one more off of your um, album, and then you guys are going to hit one off for us live to close out. Yeah. Sounds All good. right. Sounds good. This is the country song. Uh, or country song. It's called <laughs> country song, and the funny thing about this is you'd expect banjos and guitars. This song has no traditional country instruments. It's piano, trumpet, and a vocal. But the song is um, my my final word. So when I when I pass, as I know happens so unexpectedly for people in my family, um, when I go, what do I want people to do, remember, say? Um, that's what the song is about. Mm-hmm. All right. Sounds good. Well, thank you very much, Brianne, for coming in. And Evan, as well, thank you both for stopping in this afternoon and talking with me and our listeners and things like that. And this song goes out to Matt Mobley. I'm (laughs) sorry, sir, for forgetting your name. I had a massive brain fart there. But here is a country song for you. Enjoy.
All right, and another beautiful song by Brianne Marie. That was country song. Uh, beautiful trumpet in there, and this is off of her new album, our first album, mm -hmm. rather, uh, Six Strings of Peace and Sanity. And we have it here in the studio. Thank you so much for coming in and, and sharing your music with us. Thank you. And things like that now. To close out the show, you actually have a song that you're going to perform for us. Yes, we're going to play Traveling Back East. The song is about a, someone, myself and others, who have lost family members or someone close to them. And, um, you know, when that happens, sometimes you just got to get out of town. You got to maybe go back to your roots, but basically get back to who you were before. And that's mm -hmm. really hard to do when you're... Um, you know, going through all the motions and, and trying to make sense of everything. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good. And uh, thank you so much once again for coming in. And it, it was my pleasure to host you guys. I wish you, you the best of luck in the future with all your different endeavors that are going on. And uh, we'll see you guys for sure on Homegrown. Hopefully, if we get on the list. All right. I can't imagine, <laughs> can't imagine why you wouldn't. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Sounds good. All right, this was the 9 o'clock meltdown, and I was, am, still am, your host, Simply C, this evening. And you're listening to 91.3 KUWS right here in the lovely, snowy, freezing town of Superior. All right, take it away, guys.